Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. Welcome to this Rest and Worship Saturday. Remember, happy the Sabbath. Um, yeah, happy Sabbath. The Bible says that we should remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shall I labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath day of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work. Thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, nor thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that are within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. That means that He set it aside for holy purposes one day. And so, um, and while we're keeping the Sabbath, um, you know, while it's a time of rest and restoration and all that kind of thing and and deliverance, um, you know that I'm working on. Or I've been praying for a while for God to deliver me from the hurt um, that I received in times past, like church hurt. Um, and so um, I believe that it's not a matter of if he will. The question is, like, when will he? I know he will. I can feel it. It's like... So many things are happening, um, so much information that I'm gathering, so many ways that the Lord is uh, taking away from me that hurt and replacing it, that hurt with the love for the very people that hurt me or like people that has hurt me. And so um, it's a constantly a learning and unlearning situation that's going on. But however, when you look at the church, Bears that I'm talking about church hurt, not worldly hurt, not on the job hurt, not relationship hurt, but church hurt. When you look at the church, one commentator being Pastor Mark Tyler says that when you look at the church, you look at the church and expect acceptance, respect, and a sense of belonging. However, do you remember that it was the church according to Luke, the 23rd chapter, verses 13, 1, 13 to 24, and Luke, the 22nd chapter, um, Matthew 27, 17. I'll have all these Bible texts in the description, which is the arrow next to the title. Touch that and you get to the description. But anyway, um, you don't look for the church for hurt. You know, you look for the church for a sense of healing and guidance and direction. It is the house of God, okay? But um, basically, I love it that what I'm experiencing or what I had experienced is the same thing that my Lord experienced. You know, because while it is true that Jesus came here to die for our sins, okay? Um, the charges that they had against Jesus was false. Like once they said that he was perverting the nation. I don't think Jesus had a freak in his bone, okay? Then it says that he refused to honor Caesar, okay? And calling himself the king, which he was a king, okay? He was the king. He is the king. And then finally, when given an opportunity, to release during the Passover, um, one prisoner, which Jesus was taken captive at this time, so he was considered a prisoner, okay? They released Bat Barabbas. Now, Jesus, while he was on this earth, he held the sick, he cleansed the leper, he fed the 5,000, you know, he did many, many, many miracles, and yet they chose to release a known murderer, a, mo a known robber, okay? Um, another thing that, that Pastor Mark talked about really is like who we associating with. Now, the rulers, while they were preparing for the Passover, which is a holy, holy um, undertaking, a, a holy, holy institution, on the one hand, they was preparing that in front of the people, like Pastor Mark says. But underneath or, or on, the, on the inside, they were plotting 
to kill Jesus. They couldn't just openly take Jesus because the people loved him. And they love what some people love what he did for them. Some people just loved him, period. Okay. And so um, it goes on to say that Jesus was wrongfully uh, charged. He was treated bad for no reason. Okay. And so basically, like Pastor Mark said that the rulers, they looked for the weakest link. So basically Judas, from what I can remember, Judas went to them and basically, you know, he offered to deceive Jesus, to basically turn them over to these, the, you know, the, the rulers and everybody. But the thing is, is that we have to watch who we are affiliated with. And the sense of say, like, the church rulers and the leaders and those kind of things, okay? Sometimes they form a clique. They get so busy with doing the service of God, they leave out the work that they need to do for themselves. And in so doing that, um, they are led astray from God. And not only do they lead astray, they are led astray. They lead astray other people. And you would think that of those leaders that it would have been somebody, like Pastor Mark said, somebody, that would have stood up and say, now listen here, we see these, this man did things out in the open. He didn't do any wrong. It would have been somebody to stand up. But no matter what, Jesus knew, number one, Jesus knew that his time had come. Jesus knew that he was not going to be delivered, whether they was lying on him or not. It didn't matter. He was not going to be delivered. He had to die and he had to die, like, like Pastor Mark said, during the Passover. OK, during the Passover, you know, where the lamb was slain for the people. OK, and a lot of people have a problem with this, where the Bible says that Jesus, a lot of people won't even accept Jesus as Lord and Savior. But the Bible says that for us to know surely, and this is Acts 2, 36, 6, that all Israel, that we should know assuredly that God had made the same Jesus whom you have crucified, both Lord and Christ, which is Messiah. So I looked up the word Messiah and it says the promised deliverer, okay, of the Jewish nation. He's a leader and he's a savior. And then I looked up the word Lord and it says that um, Lord is one in power and authority, um, uh, one that is a ruler. And incidentally, the Bible says this, that Christ is talking to his people. And he says, you call me Lord, Lord, but you do not the things that I say. So in other words, when we are, when we have accepted Christ as our Lord and as our Savior, it doesn't mean that we still don't have freedom of choice. We do. However, we surrender that to the authority and to the power of Christ. The Bible says that we, we learn obedience by the things that we suffer. Let me ask you this. Haven't you suffered enough doing your own thing? Which really in essence is Satan's thing. Haven't you suffered enough? I know that I have. Okay. So, um, don't want to lose none of my, my Bible texts. Okay. So basically Jesus is the one. If you've accepted Jesus, okay, the Bible says that the promises of God and the promises of Jesus is for us and for our children, you know, and that basically that we should repent of our wrongful doing, be baptized so that we can receive the Holy Ghost, okay? And so basically in Isaiah 61, I believe it's one, it says that, the spirit of the Lord is upon me, and this is Christ, because he has anointed me to preach the God, to preach good tidings to the meek, and those that's those that are humble. And he has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, the brokenhearted, and to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. Sometimes the prison is not prison bars, even though those two God has a way of opening up to some people. It's been many people that's been in prison innocently that has been released. 
okay? But sometimes we can be in prison because of our thoughts. We can be in prison because of our lifestyle. We can be in prison just because we're hard-headed and we refuse to follow and to trust God, okay? But the Bible says that as many as calls on the name of Jesus shall be saved. Now, David's confession is this, that the Lord is on the right hand and he should not be moved. In other words, God has accepted Jesus' offering. Jesus was victorious in what he did in mastering this earth. Jesus did not get bound by drugs, alcohol, food, sex, whatever. He did not, okay? And as a result, he died and he sits on the right hand of the Father. We have no excuse, okay? All we need to do is hold on to Christ and follow his, dict um, you know, his, his directives, okay? Like the Bible says, Acts 2.21, and it shall come to pass that whoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And so you know that death had no power over Christ. And those same people that crucified Jesus, after God raised Jesus from the dead, Jesus walked this earth for 40 days. 40. They saw him. They knew that they were in trouble, basically. And so I know that while I'm looking for God to deliver me, I'm getting information, like I said, that I can be patient while I'm waiting. Joe Alstein helped me, and he said that basically the things that I've been, I've been through, they were ordained. David says, God allowed it to happen. When Shammai, I think that's how you say his name, when he cursed David, and David's leader, his, his captain, Joab, I believe his name was, he was upset because David was being cursed by Shammai. David said, let him curse. God allowed him to curse me. Let him curse me. Okay. And so that is helping me. Those are some of the things that's helping me. Number one, that Jesus went through church hurt himself from the, from, from the church. Now, let me tell you something. There's two kinds of people in the church. There are those that accepted Jesus as savior but they has not accepted him as Lord. In other words, they're not trying to do what he says, okay? And then you have a group of people, and the Bible calls them GOAT. Then you have a, a, a group of people that call him Lord, Lord. They accepted him as Lord and Savior, okay? And they do what he says, okay? Let me tell you something. Don't you dare ever leave the church, even though I've given myself a break from time to time, because that is your father's house. God needs people at the church that when people comes in that, you know, his people will let, wrap their arms around them and show them love and a sense of belonging and accept, accept, uh, acceptance and, and respect, okay? Um, God needs that. So pray for me. Continue to pray for me as God heals me. I believe that my deliverance is coming. But however, before it comes, God is bringing this out. And I hope that it is helping somebody. And so I got a message today from a guy from Kenya, and he was telling me how much he's uh, subscribed to both of my YouTubes, um, and he's talking about how much God has used me to help him. And I said, praise God, I'm happy to be used. So, all right, so I share what I'm going through because I don't think that I'm anybody special in that regard. I believe that the things that I'm going through, that there's somebody else that out there that's going through. I got a first cousin a sister or a brother, Siamese twin, or whatever it is that's out there that's going through the same thing. And so therefore, I share in hopes that as I get delivered, as I get more information, as I lean on God more, that you too will be delivered. I love you. Um, I'll see you in the next YouTube. Remember to share everywhere with everyone and cover subscription. And don't forget to subscribe yourself. Now to him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and ever. I love you. See you in the next YouTube. Remember, 
have a Shula ministry, ministry bench out on the playlist. Check out my playlist on both YouTubes. This one is Shula Ministries Overcomers Anonymous. And the other one is The Pursuit to Christ. Check it out. I love you. See you in the next YouTube.